Hi, I'm Willie and welcome to my channel. Thank you for being here. So I was going to do the Ring doorbell installation video, but if you've been following me on Twitter and Instagram, you know that the house that we live in doesn't have the newest doorbell set up. So I'm actually going to get a new chime, a new mechanical chime. And I've been posting pictures and I've got a lot of video taken. Uh, so once I finish that this week, I will post the Ring doorbell video. I'm really excited about that. I just got to get out to Home Depot, uh, or if my local hardware store has a mechanical chime, I'm going to buy that and we'll finish. What we're going to do tonight is we're going to install UNMS and then adopt a router. So let's get to it. Here is the website that tells us how to install and update UNMS. It's very important that you have the proper pre prerequisites. So what we've got here is we've got a Linux server, it's Ubuntu 1604. It has 2 gigs of RAM, a 32 gig hard drive, a 64-bit processor, uh, ports 80 and 443 are going to be opened from the firewall to that so we can make this work. And then we've got some other pre prerequisites we're going to install real quick. So once you've got your server, whether this is in the cloud, at DigitalOcean, um, which if you want to join DigitalOcean, I've got a link down there in the description. Uh, or whether it's on-prem, wherever it's at, make sure that you have the minimum prereqs. So if you don't, uh, your database instances could puke. Like if you fire this thing up with 512 megs of RAM, you could end up having issues. So make sure that you're always reading the prereqs for that. So we've got this. We're going to scroll down first. And there are some prerequisites that we need, uh, curl, sudo, bash, and netcat. And uh, I'm not sure if all of those are installed. This is a vanilla install with just SSH server. So we're going to go ahead and hit this real quick and see if any of those prereqs need to be installed. Looks like we need netcat. So it's going to go out and grab netcat. Looks like it's going to get it set up here. All right, so now... We're going to scroll back up, and we are going to... Now, by default, you see that this is going to use port 80 and port 443. If you do not want to use port 80 and port 443, this particular set of instructions is not going to work for you, and you're going to have to scroll down, and it tells you how to change the HTTP and HTTPS ports um, so that you're not using the standard 80 and 443. Don't use these either if you're running Unify on the same box because those happen to be the Unify default ports, so unless you've changed those. Uh, in another video I will I will run through that. So and we're also going to try to do the let's encrypt to see if we can get the green padlock. So let's go back up here and we're going to just copy this line right from the installation here. We're going to come over to our prompt, and it's going to go out. It's going to download and install Docker, so we don't have to worry about any of that. It's going to download any of the software packages that it needs. So that's what this is doing. Okay, so it downloaded and installed Docker, Docker Composer, and now it's going out and it's, it's pulling some other things. Looks like... Um, it did Redis, and now it's actually doing UNMS, and you can look at your progress. So it pulls it, then it extracts it, and you really shouldn't be afraid of Docker. Docker is going to allow some really cool things to happen in the future. There's Rabbit. Now, like I said uh, before, version 11 is a complete rewrite. They're using Nginx now. And a, a couple of other things. If you look at the release notes, it'll tell you what the updates are. But this install doesn't take too long. My internet connection's not super fast. So we're going on about two to three minutes here. I'm going to pause the video for a second. And when the install is done, we will be right back. So right after I pause the video, this actually this actually finished. So now what we're going to do is I've got a, a fully qualified domain name 
attached to this. And you're going to see that here in a second. We're going to try to get the SSL to work. I don't know if it's going to work or not. I'm kind of doing some weird things to, to get the DNS name to work. So I don't know if it's going to work, but we're going to try it here. Okay, so I pulled up HTTPS colon slash slash unms.h5technology.com and I did at least get this. So we're going to go advanced and proceed. And now we should get this initial screen. So now we're going to walk through the setup. So user admin username, whow. Doesn't really care for that password. What can we do to make it better? Hmm. It should still let us. It should still let us uh, complete Unify. If it isn't happy with your password, actually will not let you pass it. Okay. So here, please provide these additional settings. So we've got the host name IP unms.h5technology.com. America slash Chicago for the time zone, so that's a central time zone. And I want to use Let's Encrypt. Now I've got port 80 forwarded through and 443. Let's see if we can get the cert. We'll click Next. Right now, we're not going to do SNMP. We'll look at that a little later on. So we're going to click Next. It's doing some things in the background. And this is new. The first time I installed this, it did not have these cool little progress buttons up here and this is awesome so now here is our connection string that we'll actually use inside of our device and look it says a new SSL certificate was generated using let's encrypt your browser may still show a warning due to caching you can open the page in inco incognito mode or in a different browser to verify the certificate is trusted so let's open the application let's let's hold shift and click refresh and see what happens it is still cached. So let me let me open up a new browser window and we'll come right back. Okay, so you can see we are all secure now. This is using a Let's Encrypt certificate. It happened automatically. We didn't have to do anything. We've got our, our login here. So we're going to go ahead and log in. And this is the same interface that we went over the other night. So real quick, we're going to set up a site and then we are going to attach an edge router to this. So we're going to come over here to site. We're going to go to new site. We're going to call this H5 technology. And we're going to put, um, let's find an address real quick. All right, let's see here. If we can get our address in here. 61615. And Contact person, Willie Howe, 309-863-5215, Willie at HowX5.com. Okay, a little shameless plug there. We'll go ahead and save this. And now we have a site, and this site is actually going to show as inactive until we join a device. So the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to come over to our settings and we're going to go down to, by the way, get yourself familiar with this. If we were going to enable two-factor, we would uh, click this, we would scan the barcode and it would be done. We can make it so this user doesn't get alerts by unchecking that. We can make the user read-only. You can see my two-factor auth is disabled. Then you've got your maintenance, so you can do your backup, check for updates, download firmware from UBNT. Now here is some of the information about UNMS. Here's our our host name, and we're using Let's Encrypt. And we don't have Google Maps selected here. If we had Google Maps selected, we would have to use a Google Maps API key. Uh, and we want to go to connection. We are going to copy this guy out because we've got to do some rearranging here. So we're going to copy this. We're going to open a notepad. We'll save this. And we're going to save this as UNMS connection string. 
So we've got this saved. So now we are going to hop over. Actually, I want to bring this up here real quick. Yeah, so there's no devices, so you're going to see what, what's going to happen here in a minute. We're going to hop over to the edge router. We're going to throw this connection string at it, and we're going to see what happens. So we'll be right back. All right, so what I've done is I've I took my PC and I plugged it into an Edge Router X vanilla uh, WAN 2 plus LAN 2 or WAN, WAN plus 2 LAN 2 uh, wizard and the inside network is 192.168.70.1 the outside network is DHCP we're gonna log into this and we are going to adopt it into UNMS so I've got a default username that I used here we're gonna log in and you can see the inside is 192.168.70.1. The outside is 192.168.66.249. Now, you do have to be running EdgeOS 1.97 or better. You can see we're on Hotfix 1 here. So now if we go down to System, you're going to see this UNMS connection, and it's going to be in beta. So we are going to take our UNMS key, and we're going to paste it right there, and we're going to click Enable. And then we're going to save this. And now we're going to hop over to UNMS and we're going to go to sites. And there's nothing there. So we're going to go down here to devices. And nothing has showed up yet. We'll refresh that. We'll give this a second. Okay, so after waiting for just a minute there, uh, we see the edge router x 1.9.7 hotfix 1 is unauthorized so we want to authorize this and then it's going to ask us which site or client and we're going to say h5 technology and then we're going to hit authorize and it says the device ubnt has been authorized and added to unms so if we go to sites now we see this site is active if we go to the site we now see that this device is active. We can go in here, we can look at the clients, there's the log, here's the gallery uh, for the site, that's for the site, not the device. But now if we click on the device, now we can see all of the interfaces, we could add a VLAN, we can see all of our routing information, our DHCP, there's our servers. Now there is a bug in 1.9.7 because there is actually a lease off of this and it is not a bug in UNMS but is actually this this firmware. So let's go back to our devices and we actually have this firmware update button. So if we click this firmware, it, let's see, Edge Router X, and it says there are no firmwares available. Let's see, we probably have to go to the firmware manager download UBNT firmwares so the firmwares will download in the background so we're gonna wait a few minutes and we're gonna let it the firmware download then we're gonna go here and we're gonna upgrade the the edge router X okay so after waiting just a few minutes all of the newer firmware that we can push to the devices for UNMS became available and so we can look and we can see here's the ERX, ERX SFP, and the Edgepoint R6. And it is 1.9.7 hotfix 4. So what we're going to do is we're going to go back to our device and we're going to go over here and we are going to say firmware. And we're going to select the box here. And make sure it's everything is one, you know, hotfix 4. And we are going to upgrade one device. Now the task has started and my PC is plugged into this so we will probably lose connection alright over here under task manager we've got in progress firmware upgrade and it's been going for 16 seconds we can see the status over here while we're waiting for that you can see in the log file I logged in UBNT was authorized UBNT was moved UBNT up upgrade from firmware firmware version 1.9.7 hotfix 1 to 1.9.7 hotfix 4 was started by WHOW. So our status moved a little bit there, that's good. So while that's upgrading, 
when this device connected to the UNMS server for the first time, it created this backup. So now I can download, I can restore, and it's always good to make a backup of your gear. It's a fantastic idea. So let's go back to our task manager. And it looks like we're about halfway there. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to pause this video. And when this firmware is done upgrading, we'll be right back. Okay, I was gone just a few more minutes. Uh, we had dinner real quick. We can see that our firmware upgrade is done. It took four minutes and three seconds. And now our router is on 1.9.7 Hotfix 4. Took a new snapshot of the configuration. And so we've got some limited things that we can do. Actually, they're not super duper limited. Uh, you can configure static routing, OSPF. Um, you can change your interface configurations, your DHCP. You know, QoS and firewall are coming, and so are the shell. So that's that's it for this video. In the next video, the next UNMS video, what I'm going to show you is how to configure the SMTP server. We'll talk about that. We'll talk about that mailgun service that I use, but then we'll also join the AirCube that I have, the AirCube AC. We'll join that. We'll also join some AirMax devices, and we'll join a switch. So the next video will be like joining all the things and seeing how this works. So uh, this week, I'm hoping to get that ring doorbell video done. I'm really excited about that. Um, I've also got the Grand Stream router stuff coming. We've got, of course, all the Ubiquity videos. So if you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. Please subscribe. Please comment and share. Please follow me on Twitter and Instagram. The uh, usernames are down there. Please use that Amazon affiliate links down there to buy your gear. It doesn't change your price, but it kicks a few bucks over to the channel. I appreciate you all being here. I really, really do. And as always, we'll see you in the next video.